Good afternoon. This is Hiltrude Dawson. I'm a health promotion consultant at uh, Best Start by Health Nexus, and I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar. Um, it is definitely a time of stress. Um, we are talking about, you know, managing anxiety during the social distancing and maybe even social isolation. And um, my colleague, Angela Geddes, will be talking about parenting under a whole new level of stress. And we also have um, Brian Russell from Dad Central, who will talk about some resources that we have um, for dads in particular, fathers. Um, and I will be sharing a few of the resources that we have at Best Start by Health Nexus. Um, just for those of you who don't know Best Start, actually I'm sure many of you will, you've used our resources somewhere or other. I, I have um, listed a few at the end that can be helpful, especially in this context. And please check out our website at www.beststart.org. Um, and the, uh, yeah. Um, and we are in a website revamp, so if anything isn't quite right right now, it is because we are going through um, a major reorganization and rework of our website right now. And it should look much more up to date and um, modern after we're done. Um, all right, so I am really happy to see quite a few of you online. I'm sure a few more will join whenever they can. And we will be, we are already recording the webinar and the recording will be sent out via social media and via our list serves. Uh, we have five, actually we have six different um, e-networks that we send uh, things like this out through to people who are interested in that or sharing it with other parents and please feel free to share the link once you receive it. Um, you'll have your website console and I'm hoping that everyone can hear okay. If anyone can't please send me a, a note. There is the question tab and that's where you can type in questions. Please type in, as we're going through this, any questions. I'm not going to answer them during the time that somebody is speaking. We're going to read them at the end and talk about them so that we have that on the recording as well. Um, if there's something really urgent, I will interrupt the presenter and we'll deal with it um, right at the time. But basically our question and answer period will be the last 10-15 minutes of the webinar. So in the if, if, you know in light of that we all have extra things at home, children at home and all kinds of things going on, we're going to move on and I'm going to hand this over to Angela who's going to introduce herself. Thank you, Hiltrud. Yes, um, yes. so welcome everybody. This is Angela Geddes and as Hiltrud said, I'm a, um, a health promotion consultant at Health Nexus and I've had uh, quite a few years experience working with um, a number of different families in a number of different uh, venues. So I spent a great deal of time at community health centers teaching parenting classes and certainly supporting families uh, during troubling times. So I think everyone in this room, so to speak, uh, recognizes that parenting can be a very tough job at the very best of times. Um, but here we are in very odd and unsettling times. So Hiltrud, if you want to flip to the next slide, I think we're okay with that. Um, um, so the difference obviously today and what we're hoping to to just discuss are just some strategies and some tips that help us through some of these unique experiences that we're having but you know addressing anxiety and stress we're going to have I'm sure many of you are familiar with a lot of the strategies that we're we're going to discuss today but we're just going to amp them up a little bit and just provide reminders and support for one another to uh, to help us all get through this because every one of us in this room are experiencing these um, these situations right in in various different forms so so the next the next slide we're going to talk about you know what is actually happening at home right now that might be a little bit different than what we're used to although I do work with many families who experience what they refer to as as real and um, and 
challenging isolation. I think we've just upped it to a degree that certainly has not been within my lifetime before. So we are recognizing that, you know, we are very isolated where uh, and some families are far more so than others. Um, what's happening at home too for many are real uh, and unique financial concerns. Um, a level of uncertainty and fear, I think, that many people have never experienced before. Um, I think there are many parents, too, that are really worried uh, about their, their children and their academic progress and where what this means, what this break from school means, and the enormous responsibility that they're placing on themselves in order to keep their children uh, moving forward in, that, in a good way. So... Um, I also think that, you know, again, with the isolation, that means there's a lack of support. There's a lack of uh, get-togethers. There's just those play dates, those play groups that, you know, our Ontario early years are, are filled with centres across the province that were put in place exactly to reduce isolation and to make sure that families have a common place where they can um, share their, you know, celebrate their, their experiences, but also share openly um, some of their trials and tribulations and obviously that's not possible right now so with that comes a level of grief and i think that there is you know various degrees of that but we are experiencing grief and not being able to have some of those things that we we have become so used to uh, and i think that it's really important to acknowledge that and on the flip side of that what is also happening at home is that you know, for some, there's quality time with family members that people have been longing for and certainly have just not had the time. Um, I can remember my little guy when he was in kindergarten, he was just like, it's just not fair. I have to go to school for so many hours of the day. It takes, I go to school for 12 years in order to get one year of time at home when he counted up all the summer holidays and just the limited time that he got to spend at home. He didn't feel like that was fair that he spent more with his teachers than his mom. So I thought that was really kind of interesting. Um, and, you know, to take advantage of that opportunity to rest, to, to do some of those recreation and leisure activities, obviously on your own and practicing all of the social distancing and that kind of thing. But, you know, doing some of those things, including not the fun stuff necessarily, but the spring cleaning and just having time to do those things and time to cook a good meal and or a favorite recipe that brings you comfort are some things that are now happening at home that weren't happening as, as often before. So, so we'll, we'll explore a little bit more now. We can move to the next slide, please, Hiltred, um, just talking a little bit about some of the compounding risks, compounding issues that, are experience, that we're experiencing right now. So if there are mood disorders, if there are, um, you know, current difficulties handling stress, if there was uh, issues within relationships prior to this um, COVID-19 experience, um, if there's postpartum depression, and if there was already existing loneliness or, uh, you know, a family at risk of breaking up, for example, well, then obviously we've got very limited places to go. Uh, we've got, you know, different things, different ways that we have to address these things. But I think that, you know, it's really important for all of us to recognize that if we are experiencing acute stress, what does that mean? What does that look like? And how can we really experience it and process it given the circumstances that we have right now? But to deny it or to avoid it or to stuff it just certainly compounds those things. Um, and, you know, there are a variety of different support systems in place. And thankfully, we are living in 2020 in the sense that we have access to um, telehealth and, you know, online platforms like we just never have had before. So, um, again, mood disorders just, yeah, sorry, go on. Yeah. So the next one, no, it's okay, Hilter, we can move on to the next risk. And that is, um, I think it's really important to, for all of us to know that sometimes home is not a safe place. And I think we talked about this, uh, amongst the team, that we're already hearing from police officers that there's an increased uh, amount of calls around domestic violence and even just community disturbances because people are experiencing more stress than what they're used to and uh, more agitation, more fear, all of those things. So sometimes home is not a safe place. So there are risks to, uh, to children, um, more child protection issues for sure. Um, 
and then more risks within the within the couple and the family dynamic as well. So those things are things that we have to consider. Um, so I would encourage you if you have any questions or any other, I want this to be as interactive as a, as a webinar can be, but just throw, throw some comments into the chat box or the questions and we can discuss them at the end. So if there's any compounding issues that we, what, that we are worrying about, I'd be happy to address those at the end. Um, so how do we as parents cope with our anxiety? And again, some of these things are going to be the same strategies that we always use, but maybe we'll just be a little bit more acutely aware of how uh, to pull them out of our back pocket and use them more readily. So the first one I think is really, really important is just to really acknowledge the feelings. Um, you know, I, I mentioned about feeling um, grief. I can speak for myself personally. Um, I have a wedding that was that's planned for May the 1st. We have a reception that's gathering. We have a honeymoon that obviously none of that is going to happen the way I intended to. Um, but I find myself every time I think or I get a little bit sad about that, I find myself feeling guilty and saying, just stop it. This is, this is, and legitimately, it is so small potatoes compared to what other people are experiencing. However, stress is relative and we can and have permission to feel what we feel. How we respond to that and how long we allow ourselves or, or have to be stuck in, in a feeling is something that we do have a little bit more um, control over and certainly the awareness of it and the acknowledgement of those feelings and allowing ourselves permission to feel helps us to process it, helps us to talk about it, helps us to journal about it, helps us to write about it, whatever, but it helps it uh, mitigate the risk of it becoming something that, that's bigger than what it needs to be. And so again, I mentioned the online social connections, which I think are really important and that can provide us with a sense that we're not alone. So it's okay to share, uh, you know, some of our more challenging experiences with people who we trust. But then I also encourage folks to think about, you know, what are some of the good things that are going on as well? Because if we're always focusing and supporting one another and sharing some of those, those trials, uh, and challenges that can get heavy for folks and we don't we certainly don't want to add to anybody else but we also want to have that safety and that ability to to be open and honest um, coping with anxiety another good way too I find is is really good weekly planning um, we can talk about that a little bit more and I know that sounds odd but you know, one of the things that new parents, or at least I did as a new parent, find found really, really difficult was that lack of schedule, that lack of my day planner telling me where I was supposed to be at what, what specific time. Now I had to listen to a little person's needs in order to guide my day. Um, but within that experience, you can um, try to develop, a, you know, a relatively flexible calendar. And some of those routines that, that families got used to are, are quite significantly different now and, and creating the opportunity for um, a new a new normal is really helpful. Um, Self-care again um, seems kind of out of reach for many but self-care does not always involve a trip to the spa as we know that um, but sometimes it does involve getting things off of the to-do list, getting to the taxes in the evening and get it fin getting it finished and, you know, tackling some of those jobs and, you know, cleaning the windows and, and just doing things that you just didn't have time to do, but having them off your calendar so that when things come back to the old normal, we're in a much better position. Um, and then also taking time to, to feel that hope and to support one another with strategies to move forward in a good way. To talk about that and make, make that your focus. You know, what are, what are some of your values? What are things that are really important to you? And in spite of what's, what's out there and all of the distressing circumstances, how can I live um, in line with those values and, and really create opportunities to take me closer to them? Um, and then also during these really unsettling and or unprecedented times, I think that really talking about or exploring your own perspective on things and being open to shifting um, what you used to think was really important, for example, and evaluating some of those expectations. So um, earlier we talked about the pressures that parents are feeling now to, to educate their kids. And I just think that it's really important that to remember that everybody's in this situation in the same way. So 
um, it's not your job to to teach the way that they would be taught in a school but it is your job to teach them in many different ways. You know, these are opportunities to learn a whole bunch of new things. Um, but the most important lesson is, um, is that safety and that, you know, connectedness and that love that that's more openly available or not even more openly, but there's certainly more opportunities for that to be shared and really cool experiences. So, um, and maybe, you know, we used to think that we had a limit on our TV screens, for example, and maybe we need to shift that. And that's not going to change things fundamentally moving forward. Your value is still around, you know, academic experiences and uh, physical activity and social face-to-face -face communication. But obviously, we have to shift that up a little bit. We have to give ourselves permission, recognizing that that doesn't mean that the whole, you know, your whole parenting plan is is at risk. So. So we can move to the next slide now, please. Um, <clears throat> so again, this would be another opportunity. You know, what are some of the circumstances that you're dealing with at home that you would like to discuss? We can just, I just encourage you, if you have any questions or any suggestions, just add them to the chat box and we can talk about them later. So next slide, please. Um, so one of the big questions I think people have are how do we calm our children during these uh, difficult times? And I think that now more than ever, I think it's really important to recognize developmental stages and their own readiness. Um, you know, you know your kids better than I know your kids, obviously. Um, but I think that you know, we all know that kids can read us. And, and I've always said this in all of my parenting classes, but when mommy and daddy aren't happy, ain't nobody happy. And I think that that, that does put a little pressure on us. And every once in a while, we have to fake it until we make it. Uh, but kids are intuitive, and they do know it if you're not feeling, if you're not feeling at the top of your game. And quite frankly, it's okay to not be at the top of your game. Nobody can be all the time. Um, but how do we make sure that that kids understand the truth as much as they can handle developmentally without scaring the wits out of them? And so I think that, you know, you also as parents have to know your children and weigh that cost that cost and the benefit to being completely open and honest around everything. So, um, but developmentally, like I said, you have to you have to know your kids and, and see what they're what they're able to handle. But I really encourage, you know, if you cry or if you're upset or if you're worried about something, name it. Talk about this. You know, when your kids are wanting to go play and they can't go play and they're having a little bit of a temper tantrum about that, you can say, Hey, I get it. I miss so and so, and this is what I'm doing instead. I'm writing her a letter or I'm sending her a text message. Would you like to do that? Would you like to send a picture of somebody? Would could we arrange a, a FaceTime play date later on? Or what can we do to explore some of these things together in order to make this a little bit easier for us? And you know, assuring people that our government and all of these um, uh, these safety practices and precautions that we're putting into place is to make sure that you know really really smart people are guiding these decisions and making sure that we're all as healthy as we can be and because mommy is pretty young and mommy's pretty healthy for example if that's your case then reassure them and say we're, we're you know we're going to be okay um, but there is you know a, a real risk out there and again um, you know that you have to use your own words not my words but i think it is really really important that we we be honest but we don't um, catastrophize the situation um and again everybody's family is different and i happen to support a number of families with some very complex uh, neurodevelopmental disorders where you know impulse control and sensory processing and noises and sounds and chaos and groups and lack of routine and all of those things can be really 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 problematic for folks um, and they have a hard time handling their um, their anxiety in a way that's that can be pretty troubling so I think that, you know, having a safety plan or having a discussion around what's going to happen when uh, ahead of time, when, when things are fairly calm, I think those are really important um, ways that we can mitigate the risk of something um, bigger happening. But again, acknowledging the feelings, openly talking about what's happening and planning together as a family, I think is really important. So we can move to the next slide now. 
please. Um, again, I talked a little bit about time for yourself. Um, dividing and conquering too, I think is really important. And, and again, time for yourself, that might mean you wake up a little bit earlier. It might mean that you go to bed a little bit later. Um, it might mean that you divide your house up and every, there's a quiet room in your house and everybody gets a, uh, a chance to be in it. It might mean that, you know, you've got a movie that's age appropriate downstairs and you've got another one upstairs or maybe everybody gets to watch a movie in mom and dad's big room or, you know, just a special time. Maybe movie time is between four and six every day now to just everybody gets used to, you know, looking forward to that before supper kind of thing. But dividing people up and making sure that people have a little bit of space if, if they need it. I think those are important pieces. Um, next slide, please. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go through because I know that I'm getting on to my 20 minutes here, 30 minutes. Um, so again, I talked about acknowledging the feels. Obviously, we all have to do our part and demonstrate that and feel good about what we're doing. And I think that a good, you know, a reframe for some of this too is, you know, rather than looking at it as a quarantine out of fear or for self-protection, it's a, it's a, the reframe that I got just from a colleague actually today was the new word called quarantine and that's our way of of demonstrating our concern for the collective for everybody in the community and for everybody's well-being so I think that's another really good way and it helps us to feel like we're contributing to the solution and I think families and, and kids need to to be a part of that as well talked about the hope and optimism I am a big um, fan of mindfulness and yoga and I think that it really does help even little people. It, it really helps them learn the power that we have over our own thoughts. And we can stop that kind of ruminating. We can stop ourselves from feeling overwhelmed um, by just slowing ourselves down a little bit. So I think that's really an important thing to consider. And then I also really think that it is perfectly okay to take a break from the news for a while. Um, that can be very overwhelming and very anxiety provoking. So it's important to keep up and to know what's happening. Um, but maybe you have a go-to or maybe you do it once a day or maybe you do it once a, every couple of days, whatever works for you. But, but please give yourself permission to turn it off for a while. So, um, so we talked about the importance of good planning. Um, I know that, you know, I used to encourage Sunday night meetings where all the kids got to pick their own meal. Um, I never had any arguments about what was for what we're eating because it was on the calendar and they knew and everybody knew they got a favorite. So that was a really, really cool trick. Um, and then if they like to make it, that was part of their, their role as well. Another thing that I've often encouraged folks to do is that for parents to give themselves uh, 15 maybe 30 depending on what you're available or what you're able to do but a good 15 minutes after every meal to talk to one another if you can or get on the phone facetiming somebody who's important to you um, and talking about something other than your kids other than corona for example or COVID-19 pardon me um, and that's sort of basically a no interruption zone. So every all the kids get to to know that that's mom's time or that's dad's time or that's mom and dad's time or that's mom and mom's time. That's just parenting and caregiver time after the uh, at part of the day that's just dedicated to them and there's no interruptions. That is a big one and I find a lot of people really seem to appreciate that. Um, again, another 30 minutes or some time during the day where it's just quiet for everybody. That's another tool that people really, really appreciate which speaks to the plan breaks and respite. Um, creating a safe space in your home. Um, so again, whether it's a room or everybody has their own space that they go to once in a while. Uh, I also think that it's really important under this new normal to be aware of you know the risks of overdoing things over sleeping over eating over watching binge watching um, and then also some of the vices that are out there so too much drinking too much marijuana potentially just be aware of those things because it can creep up and I know that there's jokes going around my Facebook all the time talking about don't forget to put your button-up pants on every once in a while because yoga pants and track pants and pajamas can be a little forgiving we can lose sight of how many snacks we've had so um, and then also I really encourage the the opportunity for 
online entertainment and activities. People are being incredibly creative. I have a, a bunch of musicians in my family and world, and I'm just so impressed with the number of Facebook live concerts that are free and available to everyone. Um, and then I also know there are a lot, tons of activities and groups for young people and you know educational things. Um, singing lessons, vocal lessons, uh, music lessons, art lessons, all kinds of things. So I encourage everyone to just explore that as much as possible and I can certainly be helpful if that would. Uh, afterwards, if anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to investigate further. So I think we're just about ready to wrap up. Let's just move to the next one. Yeah, we talked about gratitude and feelings and, you know, our perspective around, you know, is this urgent? Is this something that we really need to do? And grab that book that you've been meaning to read, maybe learn something brand new, whether it's a computer program or a, a new instrument. Um, and of course, breathing and spending out time, uh, uh, time outside in nature is, is really important and relatively safe. Um, of course, keeping our, our distance from other people. The other day I went for a walk with my dog and I went around, this, this young person came running around from nowhere out around the corner and I bolted across the street and I'm sure I scared the life out of him, but didn't want to get too close. <laughs> so, um, and then of course, you know, be aware of, of what you're feeling and when things are not feeling like they usually do anymore. So when do we go for help? And I always encourage people to go for help when you're, you know, feeling more um, sad than than what you've been feeling for uh, a significant, you know, three or four days. You know, if you're crying more often or if you're having difficulty sleeping or, you know, don't let it go. See where you can uh, ask for some help and recognize this is not, this is not your normal. And the longer we let, um, acute stress continue, it becomes chronic and chronic stress changes the way our body uh, behaves. So I really encourage people to just notice and really notice when things don't feel right, they probably aren't right and it's okay to ask for some help. So I've listed a few resources or, or links here for keeping connected. So one of them, there's some COVID-19, um, there's a fact sheet on ementalhealth.ca. And there's, uh, that's a, to me, that's an excellent, it's my go-to resource as a clinical social worker. I send fact sheets out to people all the time and it deals with everything from mindfulness to anxiety to parenting to um anger management, some neurodevelopmental disorders, autism, sleep problems, all kinds of things. But they, they do have an updated resource specifically around coping with COVID-19. So I encourage you to, to check that out. Um, if you've got benefits at all, Psychology Today lists uh, clinical providers, um, therapists in your area. So I encourage you to check that out too. There's also sheltersafe.ca. That's our Ontario um, shelters if, if you know of anybody that's experiencing some pretty significant um, family issues and then also the early on centers which I'm sure they're going to be offering some online things as well and then the Canadian Mental Health Association is a good uh, go-to for mental health support. So I think Hiltrud we can move it on to you. Yeah, or, uh, yeah. Great, and I think before we move on to um, the resources slides, there have been two questions. Let's just answer them first. Um, okay. There's one really important question here. Well, they're both very important. There's one from mm -hmm. Ashley. Any mm -hmm. suggestions as to how to cope with being pregnant, expecting a baby in the next few weeks, as well as not being able to have the support from family because of self-isolation? Mm, yes, that's, that's a tricky really one actually. Yeah, Jamie's daughter is in the exact same situation. Mm. Um, so I would encourage you to speak to your, your physician. I know that I've got friends and colleagues that have um, had family members quarantine, you know, make sure that they stay um, symptom free for over two weeks and they feel comfortable having their mom or you know somebody um, around so I would encourage you to speak to your physician around that but two weeks of quarantine where there's absolutely no outside contact would would then leave you symptom free um, and, and safe to to be able to explore you know supporting that that new little pumpkin and certainly your your journey through this um, very very difficult times again the you know 
the self-care, the mindfulness, the yoga, the breathing, the acknowledgement and, and online supports. And if there's a, I don't know if there's a group around or just ongoing connections around where you're able to really discuss that, I think would be really helpful. Um, and Angela, I can add a little bit more to that. Mm -hmm. We've been pulling together some resources at um, uh, Best Start. Um, we mm -hmm. sent out um, a bulletin last week and a bulletin this week. And there are some key resources now um, that are being developed for pregnant and parenting families. Now, some of them are from the US. Um, we're mm -hmm. trying to list the new, the ones from Canada first. There's some information from the Society of um, Obstetricians and Gynecologists uh, out there that's pretty useful. But that's I right. think those are just the sort of actual, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but what Angela mm -hmm. is saying is much more important is how do you keep your own mental mm -hmm. and physical well-being. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I want to say, back when SARS happened uh, in 2003, I was still working in a hospital and because hospitals weren't accepting visitors, um, you know, parents did feel that social isolation. And at the same time, the breastfeeding rates were up. People mm -hmm. were able to uh, breastfeed successfully because there were less interruptions they were going home earlier too. And again, at home, it was often the parents focusing on themselves, the baby, and um, it was not all bad, in other words. Well, so uh, that's take a really the good, good point. pieces out of that. And, and that's the one good thing too. You're not going to have pop in, you know, drop in visitors, you know, unexpected that just want to spend time with your baby when and they might be interrupting your day so there's again like you said pros and cons to to that obviously but facetime and and include people in your journey as much as you can through the online platforms i would suggest as well so we've got one more question and mm -hmm. then i'm just going to very quickly show the slides with the resources otherwise brian won't have any time to talk I know, at all I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> i think understanding good enough is what you're doing for you and your children and nancy that's a really good comment so it's actually more of a comment i agree mm -hmm. if we try to be perfectionists right now mm -hmm. we can get ourselves really down and even more stressed um, That's there right. is a point when, you know, you just look at this is good enough. Uh, give yourself that permission. That's a really, really important piece. And I, as yeah. uh, two parents, you may have to give that to each other too. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Actually, I had a, I had a friend of mine that put up a tent and created um, an apartment for his her child because the day before was just awful. So he wanted to move out. He was only five. <laughs> so she did. <laughs> So she made she made him an apartment with a tent and it was beautiful. So um, I encourage you to be creative. Mm -hmm. OK, so if you saw that slide there with any success stories, feel free to share success stories. I'm mm -hmm. sure Claire, Claire has ways that you can share them with one another. I just wanted mm -hmm. to make you aware that especially if there's mental health concerns for yourself, you know, if you're just anxious with all the stress, completely understandable but as Angela said if symptoms start to really not go away very easily um, it's good to look at some additional resources we have um, booklets videos on what um, perinatal mood disorders um, mood and anxiety or disorders look like how to recognize them where to get help um, we also have a self-help skills workbook for parents um, that you can work through if you have depression. Um, it works for either parent. Um, it's quite, it's been quite found quite helpful. Um, and there is a booklet that's called uh, Creating Circles of Support. And also it's meant to be for service providers, like for example, a public health nurse or someone. But here it includes this little circle and you can look here, what are the areas where I need support? And it may be a bit more challenging right now to access these. But you know, if you think a little bit and you listen to what other parents have found or reach out, you'll find that you can access almost all of these in one way or another. The ones, the practical, the instrumental support may be a little bit more difficult to achieve, especially if you're a single parent. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so that's those. And then there are a few, I listed a few resources on um, 
parenting during this time. We have a website, Healthy Baby, Healthy Brain, just tips for parents. Playing, Learning to play and playing to learn is a really great little resource with little tips and things that, to help children learn at the age appropriate stage. I have a ball website. I mean, it shows a swimming picture at the beginning, which is, you know, like something we can't do right now. It's a piece I'm missing the most because I usually swim every day. Um, mm -hmm. But anyway, it has a lot of resources too on how to do physical activity at home. Um, some of this was made for kindergarten teachers. So, I mean, some of it is groups, but it can also be transferred to just one or two children. Um, and you, there's lots of great ideas what you can do in a smaller space or indoors. Um, building resiliency. Resiliency in children is such a key factor how they will um, look at things all their life through. So that's a really good booklet to take a look at. And when things get tough, you know, it is um, harder to stay within, you know, like to keep an eye on that physical or that positive parenting so that we don't end up reacting to things too quickly. So there's a website out there, Children See, or it's um, from Best Start, Children See, Children Learn, that talks about positive parenting. There is also a handout on timeouts. These can be really helpful resources. So you can find them all. I've got the website at the bottom. And now I'm going to hand it over to Brian. So hopefully, Brian, you still have a bit of time to talk. I think we've left you 10 minutes. <laughs> that's fine. No, it was really it was really great to hear all, all that Angela was talking about there. I think that's very helpful, helpful stuff. So I uh, just want to say hi to everybody. Uh, my name is Brian Russell. Uh, I'm a consultant with Dad Central Ontario and a uh, uh, psychotherapist in private practice as well. So I've been working with dads and families for probably over, over about 15 years now uh, in some sort of community-based groups, sometimes therapy, back and forth a little bit, but um, uh, had a, just a, it was, it's just great to be able to talk about fatherhood a little bit. And um, uh, so I want to share some things over the next few minutes that I think can be helpful, or I hope are helpful anyway, uh, to think about how, how um, dads manage this transition to fatherhood, how they can kind of be Kind of a full-on dad and uh and really uh, a full part of of a team that, that's raising raising kids it's actually interesting uh being at the time that we're in too just thinking about uh not only our parents transitioning to being a parent but uh some are actually having to do that and staying at home and uh, having uh, kind of forced isolation on them and that, that sort of thing so uh, as much as families are changing and the the need i think for dads to be more engaged with families and um and with with kids and kind of raising 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 their children uh sort of in the big picture we're also seeing that i think right now there's a really neat opportunity for new dads to be using the time that they've got uh, at home to to be able to to do all that they can to to learn about their kids and communicate with their kids and um and build those those connections so i think it's it's great but it also brings a bit of stress i think with just a bit of the balance of uh, how do i spend my time and uh, how, as a dad how to how do i figure out the work family balance when <laughs> if i'm in isolation families all around me all the time so um i think it's it's neat opportunities and and a good a good thing to be thinking about so one of the things we, that I think is helpful is to to kind of shift the uh, our mindset about fatherhood from being somebody who just supports mom to how do I become a full-on parent, right? Like how do I become a co? I really see myself as a co-parent, and and I think that's the thing that's been shifting over the years in terms of how dads see themselves, and it's it's important that um, that we we talk about some of those things, and think about what it means to. Uh, as dads are supporting moms, just what that might look like. And one of the things I think that's helpful is to to realize that a lot of times uh, fathers have a bit more of a, a, a steeper learning curve after a baby's born. So moms have been thinking about uh, their baby, you know, they've been probably reading more than some dads would be reading about being a, a parent. They've just been thinking about it differently. And um, and also they're they're talked to differently. Uh, and so they're, they're, I think moms moms might look like they've got a bit of a head start. It doesn't always uh, necessarily play out that way, but uh, but sometimes uh, dads can feel like uh, they're doing a lot of catch up and they're learning kind of on the on the fly. And so 
uh, I would just encourage dads to to take uh, a lot of, or to kind of be aware that becoming patient with themselves and getting comfortable in their role is something that can take some time, and that's okay. It's okay to take that time. Uh, we're not sort just sort of dropped into the role with uh, knowing everything to do. Uh, and it, it's good to learn those sort of things. But on the flip side too, I think it's it's important that uh, we don't just default parenting stuff to mom all the time. I think that mom knows all the answers because I know a lot of times moms will be wondering themselves. You know, they're, they're, they they might have the expectation that, that they should know the answers to things or know how to do things, but that just doesn't um, it doesn't always play out for them well. So uh, so as dads are trying to find that balance, I think it's important for dads to do a couple of things. One is to rec to just be thinking about on the job experience is actually some of the best ways to learn that, that they can do. So practicing things with their kids, uh, doing things with their kids, like because um, uh, because time and practice really is a way to to get comfort uh, with something. Um, and I think one of the things that a lot of times I'll encourage dads to be doing is to find time with their kids on their own. Uh, so and and that comes out in a couple ways one is um, what's something that I could really become good at right like sort of taking on one or two tasks that that uh, one or two needs that a, a baby might have and saying those are you know I'm going to do that that's going to be my regular thing so it could be bathing bathing the baby uh, it could be uh, taking the baby for a walk uh, sort of once a day you know, weather permitting and isolation permitting I guess but um, but just finding something that that the dad says I can, this is the one one place for sure that I'm going to get competent in. I'm going to learn, and and, uh, and and also it's a way that this is I'm going to this that I will be connecting with with my baby and and kind of and building the bond uh, that's there. The other thing that that does is that I think it's it's helpful for the couple when um, when dad is intentionally giving mom time on her own, and so dad takes the baby for a little bit, and uh, mom can use that time to. To care for herself, to get get some rest, to get some sleep, to phone somebody that she'd like to to talk to, just to have a, a bit of that space. I think that's that's important, and especially in in, mo in times like this, that um, you know, if we're dealing with isolation and and uh, social distancing, um, I, I I think new parents are probably at a little bit of risk to feel very much isolated and to have uh, some struggles around that, because a lot of times parents will feel that anyway. In the best of circumstances so if mm -hmm. moms and dads can be encouraging each other to use some of that time to be connecting with other people as well i think that can that can be a helpful thing so find a job that, that we're good at uh, be looking at this as on the job experience like what am i what am i doing and how am i uh, just sort of when i get hands-on i'm actually i'm learning as a dad um, and so I, I think the other encouraging thing too is that as a dad, when we develop our skills, um, it's actually a little easier for mom to 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 let that happen. So if mom sees the dad is taking uh, taking charge of things and and um, and getting some of these these skills that that he's wanted to do, or just the ways that he's connecting with his with his child, that that um, that encourages mom. And I think moms moms will often feel feel good about seeing uh, seeing dads look after things like that. I think too, it's important uh, to spend a lot of time listening to mom. I think dads can can really uh, listen and uh, and find out what's going on during the day, of what's it been like to be with the baby, what are they learn, what's what's mom learning today about the baby, um, how what can you fill me in on, what did I miss, sort of thing if I haven't been around. Um, and so it's listening, but without fixing the problems, right? Like it's letting mom just be able to talk about some of those things that that um, have been on her mind and and kind of in her day. Uh, without feeling like okay, I got to jump in. I got to do something about this. I got to fix this. That that sort of thing. So, I think it's a kind of a balance of, as a dad, how do I do things proactively, um, and not only when a need pops up, but at the same time, be ready to respond to those those moments where okay, maybe there is a bit of a crisis. Maybe there is something I have to to step into and um, and uh, help help out a little bit more. I think too, it's important to pay attention to mom's moods um, and just pay attention to you know her own sadness, uh, her her own anger, uh, maybe some depression if she's feeling that, but even but even especially the joy that she has and the happiness. Like just sometimes, 
sometimes we don't pay attention to the, the good things that are going on. And uh, we're, we're sort of just looking for the bad and then we try to deal with the bad. But uh, to acknowledge that uh, there's joy in our day with our kids and um, and to, to kind of point some of those things out and be able to talk about those, I think, are, are important. Uh, and it's also it's not just paying attention to mom's moods, but also to your mood as a dad. Like, what's you know, how are you feeling in in the middle of this transition? What kind of uh, like how are you managing with your anger, uh, stress, your own depression or sadness? Um, just really looking for ways to to care for yourself that way, and, and and pay attention to to the feelings and emotions that you might have, because those things are uh, they're meant to be telling us something. And so we want to be listening to those, to those kind of things that are going on. When we're thinking about connecting with our kids directly, uh, like I, I just think getting involved is really, really, really just one of the best ways to be thinking about this. How do I get involved? What do I do? I want to get connected. I want to spend as much time with my 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 child as as possible, and I want kind of want to invite them into my world as well. It's not just, hey, this is what's going on. Uh, you know, in the baby's world, which really does consume a lot of things. But it's also, how can I take my child into my world? What, what does that look like? What sort of things can um, they uh, sort of come along with me? You know, if I'm, if I'm heading to, I mean, again, in the best of circumstances, if I'm heading out shopping, do, can I just take my child shopping with me and kind of introduce her to, to the, my world that way? Uh, it's really, touch is really important. Uh, holding our babies, uh, massaging our babies, bathing the babies, like any time we can kind of go literally hands-on, uh, just really teaches gentleness and kindness and uh, softness, like we're, as, as we as we um, hold them. And so, it, and a lot of the time, and, and touch also really helps babies' brains develop. And so, I think it's it's helpful for us as dads to realize that that touch does um, does a lot of things that are that are good, and really builds our connection. And bonding with with the babies, um, and I, I think too, just remi reminding ourselves as dads, you know, we got to give ourselves time. Okay, this the connection we build with our babies is not necessarily going to be right away. We might feel it, like a lot of times, dads will hold their baby for the first time, and there's just this wow, you know, I never thought I would feel this way about this about this child. So there's like this instant connection that can happen, which is fantastic, and then over time that sort of starts to play out in in different ways about just what does that start to look like what does that that connection look like how does how do i spend a, my time with my kids how do i talk about them with other people uh, how, how how do i think about them when when i'm not around them now, those sort of things so looking for ways and, and things for you and your baby to do together that you just can see well you know he loves this kind of thing or she really responds well to the, this, these sort of things. So like singing nursery rhymes, uh, reading books together, uh, just holding her while you're talking to somebody, uh, getting a, a baby sling and, and, and being the, the one to kind of either walk around your home or to go for a walk if you can uh, with her. Uh, but any time that you can just keep your baby close, that's uh, those are, are really important things. And, and so, you know, like our, our goal and our, our hope really is that that um, relationship really develops well between dad and, um, and and mom, because that relationship is is key. And um, and so things like uh, growing together in trust and respect, um, really working hard to make decisions together and sharing responsibility together. So that could be decisions about just sort of what's happening in the home. It could be decisions about uh, the baby and, and where to go and what to do and sort of what the future might look like too. But um, but sharing those decisions is important. So being able to talk about that and finding ways to communicate well is really important. Um, conflict is going to be part of every re relationship. And just because there's a baby doesn't mean suddenly we won't have conflict. In some ways, uh, there might be, it might feel like there's more conflict. You know, everybody sort of has different responses to these kind of things. But couples really need to be finding ways to resolve conflict quickly and well. Uh, that models something good for the kids as, as children grow up and watch that, that, kind, of, that kind of relationship happening. Um, so dealing with conflict, having good communication, 
Uh, and just, I think, for parents to continue keeping uh, their relationship a priority. Uh, our children, I think, need need our, need to see relationships that are where, where mom and dad are, are getting along, whether they're together or not. I mean, I know things things can happen where um, you might be single parenting, but can those parents figure out how to communicate well? And to and to support each other and to, and really because that's what co-parenting is is doing this we're doing this together, and so uh, I think that's one of the things that's really important for kids. And so um, we have Dad Central has a lot of resources. Uh, I know Hiltred's put the website up there, so you can go to the website and there's re a lot of resources for dads that uh, just to look over and th and think about. Two that, that are one, or two that really stand out uh, that I recommend is a booklet called Renovate Your Relationships. And so that, that is uh, some tools to look at for how dads can be working to support the relationship they have, that they have with mom and, and with the baby. So renovate your relationship. And then there's also the newdadmanual.ca. And so that's a website that we've created for, uh, for new dads, uh, kind of written like a car manual. And um, and so that's that's got, got a lot of good information there. So I know there's going to be a slide up too with uh, a way to connect with with us if you want. But you can go to the website. Uh, our email address will be will be coming up on on the next slide too. So I just just really want to encourage dads to to take whatever time they've got and use that time with the highest quality they can. And uh, really just glad I could share some things. So if there's any questions or comments, I'm happy to take those too now. Yeah, and sorry, uh, Brian. I think I closed the the um, uh, what do you call it the PowerPoint slides, so we don't have the slide at the end. But I will. I think we'll just send out the websites um, at, in some way, Best Start and um, that Central as well. And I know you all are very good at searching and finding things anyway. Um, so with that, I think we'll finish because we are, are a little bit over time. Um, Claire and well we're hoping to, to continue the webinar series for a while we're hoping to have a presenter from the school board next week um, but that's not yet confirmed so stay tuned for more and if you have um, topics that you really feel should be addressed right now um, we would be happy to take your your ideas and feedback on that um, and also um, the the bulletin that's coming out this week is on COVID and children. So Claire will get that from us and she can uh, forward that to or post it on the Life with a Baby website. Okay, I think that's all. Thank you so much for listening and being patient and staying on a little longer. And have a great day and stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Children. Okay.